We're about to have a sinner soon, baby. Shoot this real quick. So a little bit of a regular video. We're at this uh, Open Studios 2022 event um, in New York at Columbia. How you doing? Columbia University S School of Arts. Seeing uh, really came for Gladstone, but checking out some other stuff. So in lieu of words, just kind of Hello. we'll look at some art. this one.
Yeah. When you work with other people, was that it's not only you doing the show? Well, well with the museum, so oh. the, yeah, the, the museum actually is being more full, which I wasn't expecting. Um, but it's, yeah. Okay. They, they somehow, like the wall, like, just like doesn't seem to have the like, the space that they have. For real? Yeah. Mind if I take any video or photo? Oh, okay, thank you. LeBron James fan? <laughs> I love it. Did you print these with a jersey? Exactly. Nice. <laughs> Can I get you on there? Can you explain the ex the exhibit or, or your process? Um, just working within um, the framework of class and class elevation and using the sports industrial complex with LeBron James, through LeBron James, and just talking about those two primary things. Um, in particular, about this idea of an open tragedy transcending the circumstances that you were born in through sports or music or art or, you know and even that that's a tenuous thing and then just talking about on a more through a smaller level and this body of work the idea of winning the lottery Five foot nine, he'll be driving a truck, you know. So he won the genetic lottery and uh, then the liberal lottery. Yeah. I like that. In relation to me, too. I don't know if you're asking about how much of this, these cars are picked for a specific reason. Connie Hall, Napoleon, and even Sebastian Telford. How did, how did the cards and the lottery tickets match up? Like, can, can you explain that? It's part? just it's something about the tangible about that. Mm -hmm. uh, just, this object that has all these all this information, which is a signifier of these men. You know, the fact that these two are autographed, and I could just buy them on eBay for like three dollars. Whereas um, this one, if it was autographed, it's essentially a down payment on a house. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so like a LeBron James rookie card is yeah, fifteen thousand. Nuts. Yeah. And so I'm just playing with that. Nice. Like it. Video you? This is like three weeks. Um, that one was like two and a half weeks. The piano was like around two weeks. Uh, this is the most recent work, that's why it's very wet. But it's almost finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. That reflection is crazy. That's the that's the trick with this painting. To get that glow is the it's all about the, um, the purple and the blue. Yeah. I like the hand too. Amazing. I'm loosening up. Yeah. I'm trying to loosen it up. I mean, even in here though. Do you remember this TV show, Doctor Katz? I never watched it. Okay, I I watched it. 
I watched. I figured maybe you had because we're like the same age. This is like my imagination of what his waiting room would have looked like. I see. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's painted in the style of that cartoon because that cartoon was like this very vivacious, like moving, like the, the line was always squiggling and moving. That was like the style of the animation. That's so cool. I tried to think about that. Damn, are, are all of your paintings from yeah. photos? No, no. Like this is from my imagination. I Amazing. Mean, the bowling alley too. Amazing. Um, this is from a photograph Sorry. that I took. I did like a photo essay of these two Uber delivery guys arguing in the rain. <laughs> and I did this sort of guerrilla style like photo essay. They had no idea that I was like photographing them. But I just was interested in like what they were arguing about. I tried to like calm, the, diffuse the situation. And they did end up like getting together and they're like, okay, okay, you know? Um, so that was that. This is like a moped tire. Have this they, is the Uber driver tire. Have they ever seen the work? No, I, didn't, I should have taken their information, but it's sort of like a commentary on, you know, how that sort of industry is like so like dependent upon in, in cities. Like this like instant gratification industry. Uber, Uber Eats, Yeah. Everything. It, would, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work in like more, less, less densely populated places. Right. I mean, imagine the city without Uber or Uber Eats. It, se it seems as if go back in places, time. taxis, you know what I mean, or buses. Yeah, and even more, and they're just, just like signals of our society and what we take for granted and stuff. Yeah, M much like this camera. Word up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a ton of them out there. We're like, we want phones. No, great work. Yeah, this is fantastic. No, I didn't go. I wanted to, but uh, yeah, no, I just showed one painting there. Can you give me like uh, uh, your name and explanation of a couple of your pieces? Oh, yeah, like, of um, so I guess um, so. My name is Shuai Yang. I come from Beijing originally. Um, a second year MFA here. Uh, well, it's kind of a long story. So because before COVID, uh, my work has been focusing on like uh, my generational problem in China. After 1980s, there is this family planning issue going on in China. Uh, so um, you mean like the two child, one the child? The one child policy. It's two child now, right? Now it's three ch children. <laughs> They're yeah. Well, I don't want to go into the Of course, I, no, I understand. I understand. I understand. <laughs> so like when COVID started, that was my senior year in college, and that's like right after graduation, I came to this program. Uh, so like the, there's like I moved to New York and. My life has been changing so dramatically, and so did my work. So I'm trying to find uh, something that go beyond my own, you know, generational problem. I want to go. I want to like care about like uh, the bigger human society, the bigger human race. So what you're seeing is like uh, screen prints with collages, and those images are coming from like. Uh, astronomical data, like planetary orbits, and also like based so, on like drawings that I made, based on shadows. Um, 
Oh, they get kind of abstracted. Yeah, um, okay, got and, you. Uh, so I'm trying to find, figure out this relationship with like, the human and the, the universe and trying to find where specific, specific uh, direction that I want to go. I love it. I love it. Uh, and so can you break down like the, the coordinates? How did you come up with these specific mm. degrees and coordinates? I got those data from open source, like star maps for astronomical data. Star maps. It's, it's, um, um, yeah, nice. combined with this model. They're just kind of com combined, and each layer is printed individually because there are some points. One, two, three. At least three colors here, and then this is like cut paper. Oh, these are like uh, laser cut uh, right. paper, and oh. this image based on my drawing of shadows. And I like I it. see these as one piece, so uh, I actually want to frame it. Oh, here is the the lights from the the window piece coming. Uh, um, <laughs> perfect. Your next level. The light from the windows coming and hitting these four pieces here. Amazing. So I actually see this as one piece, and I want to frame them afterward. Um, yeah. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Incredible you so stuff, much. of course. <laughs> this is really it's cool. It's so cool. And all of them are individual pieces. Like all of these little, they're all individually cut. Uh, and then, it, but they make it to this gradient. Super, super. And how do they kind of curve like that? You see, like, like what is this slight curve? It's like a. Are these like hand bent? bent? I do. Okay. Of course. Of course. Of course. Pretty sure Ruby just pooped on me. Yeah. Pooped? Yeah. Was she like? Yeah, I just felt it. <laughs> you poopy baby. She just learned how to walk. Is it? She's still picking it out. <laughs> Seems as much as we could on the second floor for Babe Coin Princess Ruby got restless, but we're gonna see. Did we? Yeah. We're gonna see uh, Glassstone and then call it. I'll just see it. Don't.
you be able to give me like a like a Oh, that's it. Are you the artist? No, I'm not. Okay, okay, I got you. the assistant. If you want to leave your email for future... Last time? How you doing? Gotcha. Yeah. What do you say? <laughs> of course. Of course. So we're here. Yeah, we're here. We're here. Uh, Gladstone, the one and only Gladstone Butler. We're here. What's up? What's up? Can you give it like a breakdown of what's going on? Uh, so all the sounds you hear right now are coming through the sculpture. Uh, the speakers are all off right now, actually. So on the back, there's transducers. Uh, and the sound activates the material, and that's what's happening in the loop speaker. Uh, this was just industrial sheet metal. I spray painted it with a screen print over it. Uh, this is my childhood floor tom. Oh, nice. And more sheet metal. The bucket. The sheet metal, such a very specific sound when it's like bending and snapping back. Yeah, I really like that. Also, I feel like this piece was also really inspired by just reading a lot about uh, the early Detroit techno movement stuff. Um, thinking about drumming and industry and computing at this union. Love it. It's always been fascinating like when you're explaining like your degree and then what you were pursuing with, with this degree. I always want to see like how does it come together. I've never physically seen it myself. Yeah. Can you break down some of this stuff over here? Uh, which stuff? The, so you got, what is this, a modulator? Is that what, what's Modulator, this? yeah. Modulator? So, Eurorack modular. Um, this is like, this is a synth with normal architecture. Oscillators go into the filter, uh, which goes into an amplifier. Modulator breaks those down to its, like, its components. Um, and anything can actually become anything. So I could actually use... Yeah, do a little... Yeah. I'll give you a little demo. Let's see. I love it. This is, this is what I came for. Hello. Yeah. I'm going to say, is this even perfect? I feel like I'm all in your space. Let me get... <coughs> Go back. Alright, you're on Facebook Live. I came in. I came in. Gladstone was like just like jamming out, and I, now I was like mad, mad cameras in your face. <laughs> Explain what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> get it on camera. I'm gonna get some of the stuff while you figure that out. said anything can become anything explain that that statement but versus what you're doing right now so this is like a, this is an oscillator this is the part that makes sound uh, and even to even just to turn the volume down I have to connect that to something else that turns the volume down so but then the fun part becomes how can we automate that 
awesome. Right. Like like more more emulate like a knob like a, a regular volume knob. Yeah. So now there's that same sound, and I can make something else control the volume. Um, Get so in like, This is an uh, something that just generates functions. So that's actually the same sound. So what's this part of the machine called? Like this little board with the knobs? Is it because it looks so seems this, separate from the rest of it? Oh well, I mean they're all modules. They all do different stuff. What does that um, module do? It's called a function generator, um, and it just generates voltage in certain shapes, and you can use that to do whatever you want. So if I smooth it, do like it? It starts to sound like that. Also make it faster and make it oscillate on its own. So it's two oscillators feeding into each other now. Those are the types of advantages that open up when you like have a completely open framework like this. This one. And then say super custom. Yeah, but then say I wanted to modulate the speed of that with something else. Maybe the other function. It's like it's like going. I'm, I'm noticing like uh, like uh, yeah. Uh, is that what you? Yeah. You added that like modulating kind of a the weight. Speed. What is that called? Modulating the speed. Modulating the, the speed of the envelope. Of the envelope. <laughs> these words are probably. Like, I mean, <laughs> I'm here, but I ask these questions so I can, get, you know what I mean, so I can get the actual information. I've always seen people, you know. Yeah. So now I took that and I put it through a delay. So that delay is it is it is it shortening the 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 dips? Like what is the delay doing specifically? So the So the delay what a delay does is it makes copies of the audio at a specific rate. Um, and then it tails them down. So if I take all the like bells and whistles out of um, church and you heard like your reverberation tail come back at you. Yeah. That's what I believe in. Man. You, you really can get in and customize these sounds. Yeah. So if you can, can you do like a demo with like the modular side, with the percussion side? Oh yeah. Yeah, maybe I can hear something like, like that. Uh, this this open studio has been great. I've never been to one of these. So <laughs> <laughs> this is great. So I can take that and I'll send that through. Yeah, it's going through that sculpture now. This one here? Yeah, okay. the drums so are also going to go through that sculpture. So you got these hook into the. Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Thanks. I 
love it. And this is the studio. Yeah. It's a vibe in here. You got the lights, moody lights in here. Yeah. I love it. These fluorescent lights that they have in here are trash. They look so bad. But oh. My, my prints look a lot better. <laughs> prints look better, but it's not the vibe. <laughs> the vibe. Everything needs to serve the vibe. I love it. I love it. Also, got you. <laughs> got you. <laughs> got to. <you. laughs> Listen, the art don't come out the same way without it. <laughs> it will come out looking like the lights. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. I love it. Man. Oh, the world resupture. What's up? I'm Gladstone Deluxe, aka Gladstone Butler. This is my studio. Sound sculptures, planets, studio instruments, the works. It's all here at Ivy. We got a fog machine. <laughs> For the vibes. <laughs> For the vibes. And where can people check you out at? Um, Instagram, Gladstone Deluxe. Uh, Bandcamp, Gladstone Deluxe. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Love it. Love it. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, so we just left the Open Studios 2022. Um, saw some amazing artists. Shout to shout to Bay and Bay and Baby for for thugging through that. It's uh, our shows are always aren't pleasant for little babies. I thought you were gonna like feature her on the on on YouTube. Oh. You want me to feature? You want me to feature Rubykins no, on YouTube? I, I forgot it. I thought it was just for a family file. Uh, yeah, we still can. Yeah, let's let's do that. We won't put this in YouTube. I mean, Ruby. Can you edit it? Yeah, I can. Ruby, did you have fun? This will be for the director's cut. Anything else? Any other? Any other? No, no, that's it. I forgot about the internet. Yeah. So this that was the hour, two hours in New York, headed back home. Uh, I guess hopefully you enjoyed it. If you're watching it, hopefully you enjoyed it. Just when I say. Walking around recording with this big ass clunky ass camera is not the easiest thing in the world. I can see why we moved away from them, but Bay sent me on one final, this is bonus footage. Bay sent me on one final, one final mission to get some pizza. She says she wants pizza, pizza with a side of pizza. So I'm going to get some pizza. But, but not before empanadas. How's it going? Hello, hello. Can I please have a slice of pepperoni and can I also please have a slice of this, uh, is it, I don't know if it's a margarita, yeah. That's it.